Hi, this is Amy with Gem Studios from Junction City, Kansas. I'd like to show you how to paint your barn quilt. First, let me tell you about your new barn quilt. The board itself is a high quality plywood made specifically for signs. It has been primed with two coats on the back and with, an, with three coats on the front. And we use an exterior paint plus primer. This means you do not need to paint the white again if your pattern includes white. The paint we provide in class is an exterior grade paint. There are no additional sealers needed. In fact, some may yellow if you apply it over your barn quilt. The first step is to label your pattern. If you ordered a pattern with us, your pattern will be drawn on your barn quilt already. Go ahead and choose whether you'd like to use letters for the colors, for example, G or GR for green, B for brown, O for orange, Y for yellow, or you can use numbers. Don't label your white, however. Next, let me show you how to tape this off. I'm going to use a good painter's tape. Uh, we use frog tape at the studio, and um, I want to make sure when I'm taping off a pencil line that I can see that pencil line just at the edge of the tape. So if I'm taping right here, I want to see that pencil line that goes right along here. I'm going to do this LT, which I coated for light teal, and I want to lay it right on top of that just so I can see the pencil line right along there. On this triangle, I'm going to have an outside corner here. It's a 90 degree angle there, so I can, if it's an outside corner that I'm taping off, I can just overlap the pieces of, of tape. If it's an inside corner, here I'm going to have this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle, and I'm going to paint all four of these at the same time. So I'm going to have an inside corner here, and here, and here, and here, and let me show you how, that tape, how to tape that off. Okay. Next, I'm going to lay my piece right along the next edge of this triangle. And I, I want to see, before we wanted to see the pencil line, now I want to see just a hint of that blue. Okay, and I do a light finger press initially. Okay, so to tape this off, I want to create a mitered corner. I want this tape to only overlap right at the point. I don't want to have any weird overlap parts where it can create gaps under the tape for paint to leak under. So to do that, I'm going to use just a single razor blade. If you have a handheld a paint scraper tool such as this, these work well and they're a little bit safer than just having a, a loose blade hanging around. For today, I'm just going to use this so you can see very clearly. So my goal here is to cut this tape just so it meets, it points right at this point right here in the center. So I'm going to lay my blade over this blue triangle underneath here somewhere. It can be right in the middle there, but I just want to make sure that the edge, the point that I'm cutting to, is underneath that edge. Okay. Once I've got that there, I lay the blade and push down on it, and then I just rip up. Okay, That's going to create my nice point there. So my next piece of tape to create the rest is going to actually go on this side of this triangle. I'm going to go ahead and lay that piece there. And again, I want to see just a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the tan from this triangle above here. This way, once I do that, that won't, that'll actually save me on touch-ups later, so I won't have that, a fine white line there that I've got to go back and fill in. This will make a nice seamless transition from one triangle to the next. Okay, and again I'm going to use my blade. This time I'm going to hold it the opposite way so the blade is pointing towards the edge that I'm cutting off, and I want to lay that blade over top of the original piece, and I want to make sure that it's over the point. 
Okay, and then I push down and I pull up and that creates a beautiful point right there in the center. Okay, now I'm going to work my way all the way around, continue taping off the outside of these. I'm going to have to do another inside corner here. So again, I'm going to lay that blade so the back edge of it, it's the blade, the sharp point is facing the part that I'm tearing off. The, the edge is over the point that I'm joining and the back edge is somewhere over this triangle. And the next piece, laying the tape down so I can see edge of the blue. Finger press it down. I lay my, my blade down over the point. The back end is overlapping that first piece of tape to make sure that there is an overlap there. And my edge was right over the point. Push down and pull it off. Okay, I'm going to finish taping this off and then we'll show you how to paint. Okay, so I've got my tape on. I'm about ready to start painting. After you get your tape on, before you start painting anything, you want to use a flexible card. This is an old hotel key card. Um, so you want to use your key, your card, whatever old credit card, old key card, something like that, and you're going to just run it down and you want to press the edges all the way around where you're going to paint. This is going to help seal it and make sure that that, tape, that paint does not leak underneath that tape. This is going to save you time later and frustration when you peel the tape up and you see that it ran underneath there. That's going to be an extra touch up later. You don't want to have to do that if you, you can help it. So just go around. Make sure your points press down really well. Okay. And if you're painting a lighter color, like on this one, I am going to paint a light teal color. So I want to actually paint over my pencil lines because that will show through, especially on a lighter color. Yellows and oranges are no notorious, but lighter pinks, it can be that way as well. So I'm just going to take my white paint and just paint one light coat right over those spots. Okay, And I'm going to let that dry. So our white paint is dry because I'm painting a lighter color. I wanted to paint over my pencil marks. Now I can go ahead and start painting my light teal color. And I'm going to paint this in very light brush strokes. I'm not going to put it on thick. I'm not going to glob it on. I want it to be light. It's going to take two, three, perhaps more coats of paint. We want to make sure that this is thin so it dries evenly and it doesn't peel when we pull this tape off. This is an important step. Um, and so I'm going to start right in the middle there and I'm going to paint just horizontal or, per, or parallel to this tape. I don't want to paint like this and that's going to push paint underneath of that tape. So I'm going to paint there. As you can see, this first coat is not covering well at all. It will, like I said, it will take several coats of paint to make sure that it's even. It'll give you a smoother surface as well on your finished coat. Okay, so my first coat is done. I'm going to let this dry. You can use a hair dryer again to, hair, to dry this faster, or you can just let it air dry. It depends on how much time you've got, how much space you've got to leave this set up. If you've got a couple days and you want to work on it over a couple days, it's an easy project to leave set up. Come by, paint a little bit, walk away, let it dry, go do something else, come back. And a lot of times you can tell on, it'll be hard to tell on the video, but you can tell in person if you look at it from a little different angle, you can see if it's shiny or if it's more of a matte finish, that means it's dry. You can tell the difference as it dries and just watch it and learn, you know, what it looks like when it's dry. And then you can kind of touch it and feel if it's tacky still, let it dry a little bit longer. That'll get your finish smoother as well. If you touch it and you get fingerprints in your paint, you're going to have not a smooth finish. Okay, so my first coat is dry. I'm going to do a second coat real quick and then we'll let that dry.
think we are ready for the last coat. Go ahead and put this final coat on. We're going to let it and I think it's covering quite well so we should be good after this one. Smooth it out there. I got a little bit thick up there. All right, I think that coat will be good. Now before I dry this time, since I'm confident this is enough coverage for me and my color is fairly solid, I'm gonna go ahead and peel my painter's tape up and that way um, it can dry without the painter's tape on there. It may reduce some peeling. The jury's still out on that one, but I like to personally peel it when the last coat is wet. Um, if you decide to let it dry and then peel it, really let it dry and sit for a while and then peel it up just in case that final coat got a little bit thicker. So as you're peeling it, usually I can just peel it up and it does not require much finesse, but I do like to peel it just straight along. the line that I just kind of pull it back over itself there. So far so good. Everything's coming off nice. There's no bleeding that I've noticed, no peeling that I've noticed. So we're in good shape here. Painting those thin coats, especially in the, in the first and the second coat, really makes a difference on that. Okay, there we have it. Got our nice point there. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure this is completely dry. This color that I just painted is completely dry. And then I can go ahead and once it's fully dry, you can tape right over it as I did with this blue. And if you want to do this, like I said, right now we're, um, today is April 7th, 2020. So we are at home and we have a stay at home order in Kansas. So we are not going anywhere. Um, and so if you want to do like one color per day, let it fully dry and set up and then the next day come and do another color, you know, you've got time to do that. Okay, I went ahead and moved on to, this, to the next color and I'm still waiting for that light teal to dry, but I'm going to go ahead and paint on the outside, especially since I have this. I don't usually put it on an easel to paint. I usually have it flat on a table, on top of a tablecloth and we use just some um, scrap pieces of uh, 1x4s or 1x2s, something, scrap pieces of wood to elevate it to paint the edges. And I like to paint the edges just because perfectly crisp and clean. So I just go ahead and paint on the edges as well. And on this I went ahead and I'm just stopping right there. You can take that off if you want to, but I don't find that the edges are as big a deal about getting it perfect. It just depends on your own personality. But I paint that edge. Usually the edge takes one to two coats. Um, if you're the black that we use, it seems like one coat on the edge will do that. Um, but but one to two coats gets a nice um, coverage on the edge there. And that way it's finished off on the edge as well. So that's a personal preference. Um, something else I forgot to mention, as you're laying your tape on there, what I like to do sometimes, um, if, if I can, I will fold this over the end of it just to create a little tab to grab a hold. It makes it so much easier than um, trying to pick off your tape and loosen it up when you're ready to peel it. So if you can just take it and you got the little edge, just make a little tab for yourself to grab onto, especially if you do not have fingernails. 